Hi everyone, I'm Emil Stonic, editor at large at Bon Appetit, and this is almost every way to cook a pizza. All right, there is a whole wide world of pizza out there, folks. You got soupy centered Neapolitan pies. You've got rustic Roman style rectangles. You've got the inimitable Chicago deep dish. But today, we're focusing in on a slightly modified version of a good old fashioned New York style pizza. We're after a slice with a thin, crisp, nicely browned crust that'll stand up for itself with a top layer of beautifully burnished tomato sauce and mozzarella cheese. The challenge here is to figure out the best way to use equipment available to home cooks to produce the kind of pie we can get at our favorite pizzeria. Ah, pizza. You know it, you love it, and we're gonna try to cook it every way we can think of. Before you can cook a pizza, you gotta shape a pizza. Here, we have a simple dough made from bread flour, water, salt, and yeast that we've allowed to slowly ferment in the fridge overnight. We're using about 10 ounces of dough, which is gonna produce an approximately 10 inch pizza. We're gonna flour our work surface so it doesn't stick, get our dough on there, and just start stretching it to form a nice, even round. Once we get it into shape, we can use the back of our hands and our thumbs to get it good and thin. Once it's shaped, we're gonna to top it with our super simple sauce, which is just whole canned tomatoes pureed with garlic and olive oil, and use a ladle to spread it into a thin layer. A little goes a long way. Then, the piece de resistance, a judicious handful of shredded whole milk mozzarella cheese. We're gonna get our pizza peel under there, and this bad boy is ready for the oven. Baked pizza. All right, we've got our pizza on this sheet pan and we're gonna slide it into our oven that's been preheated to as high as it'll go. Looks like a pizza, all right. So this is a pretty run-of-the-mill homemade pizza. The fact that the sheet pan had to heat up before the pizza could cook put us at a serious disadvantage. The faster you can connect the pizza dough with high heat, the better. So not a lot of spring around the edges, a little bit of color, and looking at that slice, the whole thing is just a little bit uneven and kind of floppy. Yeah, the middle is a little bit soupy, the dough is a bit dense. I think we can do a lot better than this, and the key is gonna be to create a hot surface in our home oven that can mimic the superheated deck of a real deal pizza oven. Let's see what we can do about that, shall we? Preheated sheet pan pizza. Okay, we got another pizza. This time, we're gonna slide it directly onto two preheated sheet pans, which hopefully is gonna give us a little bit more thermal mass. Well, it's been about eight minutes. Ooh, pizza, pizza. This looks pretty good. That sheet pan was supposed to mimic the surface of a deck oven because it's already preheated, and we got some nice color around the edges, but on the whole, I feel like it's a little bit floppy. Yeah, looking a little bit wet and doughy in there. We got some nice spring around the edges, but it wasn't enough to help out the middle, and it's pretty pale underneath. Yeah, not bad, but nothing to write home about. I think it's definitely better than putting it in a cold pan, but on the whole, I still think we can do better. Twice-baked pizza. Let's try another experiment with our preheated sheet pans. We're gonna bake this circle of dough without toppings first. Then we're gonna take it out and top it and then pop it back in to melt the cheese. There it is, folks. So the idea here was to give the crust a head start before the toppings got involved, and it looks pretty good. Decent browning around here, though it's a smidge uneven. Cutting into it, not bad. A bit more oven spring since the sauce and cheese weren't weighing it down. It's holding up nicely, although it did sog out a bit in the center. Not mad at it, a little bit crispier, still want more browning on that underside, and I'm not convinced that that annoying extra step was totally worth it. Pizza stone pizza. We got a pizza pie. We're gonna slide it onto our preheated ceramic pizza stone, close the oven, and come back in seven to eight minutes. Check on our za, looking good. We're seeing some really impressive crust color here. The ceramic holds so much heat and is able to deliver it really quickly and efficiently. It feels nice and crispy. Handsome browning on top. Ooh, it sounds crunchy. Nice oven spring on that profile, and the slice is holding up pretty nicely. Really tasty. Well-developed crust flavor, nice and crunchy. This is definitely an improvement on our inverted sheet pans. Ceramic tile pizza. And we've created two decks out of preheated, unglazed ceramic tiles, and we're just gonna slide our guy right in there. Should be done by now. That's a pizza, all right. 
loving those edges. It definitely feels crunchy and we got good heat on all sides. We basically created an oven within an oven, which is what I really like about this technique. Cutting in, that crust looks bubbly and crisp. Yum, this one is great. Maybe even slightly better than our standard pizza stone. And you can cover all of the racks of your oven with those tiles, meaning you can cook multiple pizzas at the same time. Plus, the tiles are cheap and easy to move around. A little DIY, but really fun. Baking steel pizza. So in here, we have a superheated slab of steel. We're gonna slide our pie in, set it to broil for about two minutes, and then drop the temperature to the highest regular baking temperature. Check on this guy. And that is our baking steel pizza. This is really beautiful looking. Handsome edges, a little charring, nice even browning on top, very substantial. Cutting in, ooh, you can hear the crunch there. I'm really excited for this one. Wow, that is a great slice of pizza. The crust development is outstanding. You know, I'm not 100% sure that it's far and away better than our tile or baking stone pizza, but I think if we had a little bit more practice with this product, we could definitely get there. Yum, crisper pan pizza. Okay, so this time we're gonna slide our pizza onto this preheated crisper pan, which is really just a perforated aluminum disc. We're gonna check on that in about eight minutes. Smells good. Okay, let's just grab this whole thing and take it out. That crust is a bit on the pale side for me. I mean, it's still pretty substantial feeling and there's definitely a little bit of give. Pretty good browning on top, but really wishing we got more along those sides. Cutting in, yeah, a little bit floppy. It's tasty, I mean, definitely not as good as our other oven experiments, but I'm impressed by what we were able to get with that thin piece of aluminum. It's really not too shabby. Frozen pizza. Right here, we've got a stretched, topped, and then completely frozen pizza, and we're gonna cook it directly on the rack and see what happens. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes, that should be done. You know, this actually looks a lot better than I thought it was going to. It is slightly deformed because of the way that it encountered the rack, but whatever. Decent browning on this side, and it kind of puffed up in a funny way, and I can't really account for that. Let's look at a slice. It does seem like it cooked a little bit unevenly because it had to defrost before it could cook, so the crumb development did suffer a little bit. You know, it's actually extremely crispy because of how long it took to cook, but the quality of the crust was compromised a bit. It works for sure, I'm just not sure that's 100% ideal. Rack baked pizza. All right, we're doing this one wild style, right on the rack. Hope we don't make too much of a mess. Ooh, it smells kind of smoky. All right, let's get this out. Yeah. Hold still. Yeah. Gotcha. So obviously the shape of this thing is a little wild and we had some drips on the bottom of the oven that created mess and smoke, but the crust on the underside actually looks pretty good. This is kind of a funny thing to cut. Yeah, pretty uneven, but definitely not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Wow, actually pretty crunchy. I mean, it's a wonky method for sure, but I'm shocked by how not bad this turned out to be. I love surprises. Oven floor pizza. All right, this pizza's going straight to hell, uh, AKA the superheated floor of the oven. Okay, time to rescue our pizza from certain death. Got it. I'm actually really impressed by the color we got on this one. It's really substantial feeling. Cutting in, we've got a nice bottom crust going on. It looks like it came out of a wood-fired oven. It's pretty good spring, handsome profile. Yum. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this stands up to our other oven surfaces. The only problem is that the bottom of most people's ovens are covered in crud, but maybe this is a good excuse to clean the floor of your oven. Grilled pizza. We got our pizza. We got our preheated gas grill. We're just gonna slide this saw right onto the grates, close the lid, and come back when it's done. Okay, it's been about seven minutes. Let's check on it. Looks ready. Not the most even pizza, for sure. The top is definitely cooked, but it didn't get enough heat, so it's a little doughy and pale. But that underside, which got the most direct heat, is aggressively charred and really tasty looking. Cutting in, feels crisp, and we're seeing a bit of spring, but not a ton. You know, the bottom of this slice is outstanding, but the top is not. I think we can do better than this. Baking steel grilled pizza. With this pizza, we're gonna try cooking it on a baking steel that's been preheating on this grill. 
slide it on and close the lid. All right, let's check on it. Uh, I don't think that bottom can take any more, so we're gonna call it. So that baking seal was definitely super hot, but the grill chamber itself was not so much. The edges are weak and there's no browning on the cheese, but there's definitely a healthy amount of color and char on that undercarriage. Getting in there, nice spring because that surface was so damn hot, but it clearly cooked unevenly. Yeah, that bottom is crunchy and delicious, but the rest is no bueno. There's definitely potential here though. Flip grilled pizza. All right, let's try this again. We're gonna slide this dough on and we're gonna come back in a couple of minutes. Okay, now we're gonna flip it, top it, and close the lid again. Not too shabby. This looks so much better to me. Now we've got grill marks on both sides, which is a huge improvement, even if we're not seeing a ton of reducing or bubbling on the cheese sauce layer. Cutting in, wow, we've got really good spring and it feels nice and crispy. That underside is gorgeous. Wow, that is so tasty. Definitely different from our oven pies, but the result is undeniably delicious. Beautifully developed crust, good grill flavor. I'm loving this. If you're working with a standard grill, this is the way to go. Kettle grilled pizza. All right, we got our pizza. We got our charcoal grill, which has been fitted with an attachment that mimics a pizza oven. We're gonna slide our pie onto this preheated ceramic stone and come back in about seven minutes. And that is our kettle grilled pizza. So a little blonder around the edges than I'd like, but the underside is what we're really excited about. That pizza stone was definitely a lot hotter than the chamber itself. That bottom looks really nice. Cutting into it, you can really hear the crunch. Nice spring along there because that bottom was wicked hot and the undercarriage has a gorgeous leopard-like pattern. Mm, it's a smidge doughy for my taste. I wish we could have closed the unit so that more heat could circulate around the top, but I'm not mad at it. Uni oven pizza. So this kooky contraption is the uni pizza oven and it's been superheated with wood pellets. We're gonna open it up, get our pizza in and close the door. This should be ready in no time. This is a truly beautiful pie, as close as we've come to a proper restaurant quality wood fired pizza. Gorgeous bubbling and charring on the crust, great color, all in three minutes. Looking at that slice, I'm really stoked on that oven spring. <laughs> yeah, this is an amazing slice of pizza. Yum, incredible crust development, so much flavor, killer texture, and that unmistakable whiff of wood smoke. If you're committed to making backyard pizza on the regular, this thing really delivers. Grandma style pizza. Time for something a little bit different. For our grandma style pie, we're gonna start with a ball of dough that's about three times the size of the ones we've been working with. We've got our sheet pan. We're gonna get a good half a cup of oil in there, spread it all around, get our dough in there and stretch it out the best we can to form a rough rectangle. Now that it's starting to resist stretching, we're gonna let it rest for about 30 minutes. Okay, now that our dough is nice and pliable again, we can keep stretching it right to the edges, then top it with cheese, and a few rustic dollops of sauce all over it. And then it's ready for the oven. Now, we're gonna get it in there and bake it for about 20 to 30 minutes. Ooh, beautiful. Obviously, this is a lot bigger than our other pies, but because it filled out the sheet pan, it was able to get nice and crispy where it came in contact with the pan. Let's check this out. What I love about this method is that the pizza almost fried in the olive oil, so it's nice and crispy on the bottom, and we've got some nice fluffy height. That's so delicious. A totally different beast from our circle pies, much puffier and richer, but I think this is a super approachable method for making a great pizza at home that doesn't require any hassle or special equipment to achieve. Deep dish pizza. For this Midwestern treat, we've got a ball of dough that's about twice the size of our standard. We've got a spring form pan, which has a handy dandy mechanism that allows us to remove the wall of the dish after it's baked. We're gonna get our pan all oiled up, then flour our work surface and stretch our dough until it's bigger than our pan. Drape it over the pan, and then try to work it so the dough kind of clings to the sides. It's taking a while. Okay, great. Now we're gonna par bake it for about 10 minutes and then it's ready to be topped. We got a good amount of cheese, then we're gonna spread tomato sauce over it just to cover and then bake it again. Deep dish pizza, everybody. This bad boy is in a class all its own. 
sauce on top. We got cheese inside. It's almost like a casserole. We got decent browning on the crust from that par bake with all that oil. You know, I'm not from Chicago, so I'm not really sure how to cut this thing. Okay, there you go. You know, I was skeptical, but this looks really good. Nice crispy crust, plenty of bubbliness. I'm into it. I can't say that I like it more than a perfect New York slice or a good grandma, but it's definitely its own special thing and not too hard to make at home. Cool. Teenage Mutant Ninja Pizza. It calls itself the most awesome pizza maker in the world. What could go wrong? Let's get our pizza in and close it. And, ooh, cowabunga, dude? So our Teenage Mutant Ninja Pizza is a little weird. It still looks kind of raw and doughy over here. There's a little bit of blistering, but a lot of that cheese kind of just overflowed and burned. But it's definitely cooked. Cutting into it, yeah, no oven spring to speak of, and the whole cheese sitch looks a little bit demented. Yeah, bummer, dude. Never meet your heroes, kids. Waffle iron pizza. We got a ball of dough. We got a hot waffle iron. We're gonna get a little bit of flour down on this surface, stretch our dough out so it's about the right size, sauce, cheese, open up our iron, and transfer our pizza right in there. Shut it, flip it, and let the terror commence. Oh God, it's leaking. Wow. Okay, well, that is a pizza waffle, I guess. So while it was cooking, a lot of cheese and sauce just kind of oozed out and made a crazy mess. Our pizza was too big for that iron, so you've got some uncooked parts here. Definitely burnt on this side, and the other actually kind of looks like the bottom of a real pizza. Cut into this, wow, very crispy. Also looks very dry. Ugh. Could be a lot worse. Definitely not getting much sauce cheese action. And it kind of tastes like the burnt edges of a lasagna. Y you know, I, I don't think anybody needs to do this. Pizzazz plus pizza. We got another pizza. We got our Pizzazz plus rotating pizza oven. We're gonna slide our pizza right on there. Set this for 13 minutes and see what happens. I'm pretty skeptical of this one, y'all. Well, I guess it's cooked. So our Pizzazz Plus definitely did a better job of cooking the top than the bottom. That cheese was going crazy, but the bottom is very pale. I was afraid we were gonna scorch the toppings. Hmm, yeah, not a whole lot to look at. Very low profile and floppy. Yeah, that is one uninspiring piece of pizza. No reason to have that thing on your counter. Breville Oven Pizza. We got a pizza. We got our Breville countertop electric pizza oven. It's set to 700 degrees. We're gonna open this bad boy up, slide our za right in there, and close the door. Now we're just gonna rotate it 180 degrees and come back when it's ready. Well, hello there. I am loving the way that this looks. The outside is gorgeously burnished, great color, and because that deck was so hot, the exterior crust just popped in a way we haven't seen a lot of today. The inside, looks beauteous. Definitely crispy, impressive speckling in color. Wow, that is a damn impressive slice of pizza. It's definitely an investment, but if you're serious about pro-level pizza at home, this thing definitely slays. Stovetop to oven pizza. We got a ball of dough. We got a cast iron pan that we've been preheating. We're gonna get a little flour on our work service, stretch our dough out nice and evenly, get a little oil in this pan, and then drop our dough right in there. We're gonna let this go until we've got a little bit of color on the bottom. Okay, looking good. Now we're gonna turn it off, top it with a thin layer of sauce, some cheese, and then take this over to the oven to finish cooking. Look at that. Okay, I'm into the browning on top, but I'm not that impressed by the edges over here, but that undercarriage actually looks really well browned. Let's cut into it. It's definitely got some crunch. Nice color development under there, and it's holding up nicely. Yum! I love that little bit of added richness and crunch the oil adds. It's not the most even, but if you don't have a stone, a steel, or tiles, or anything like that, this is a great way to make a killer pizza with a plain old cast iron pan. Stovetop pizza. Let's see if we can cut the oven out of the equation altogether. We're gonna shape our pizza pie, put some oil into that pan, 
get our flying saucer of dough in there. Once we get some color on the first side, we're gonna flip it, top it with sauce and cheese, and then cover it so we can get some melting action. Pretty. So this obviously looks pretty different from most of our oven methods, but it's pretty damn cool. The first side, which took most of the oil, has kind of a fried dough texture, while the other side is more like naan or something like that. The cheese sausage is a bit soupy because the moisture had nowhere to go. The cutting in, there's some crunch there and it puffed up really nicely actually. You know, this actually tastes so good. The sauce is a little bit raw, but the olive oil flavor is great and it's nice and crisp. This is more like a flatbread of sorts than a traditional pizza, but it's a tasty thing nonetheless. Boiled pizza. Things are about to get weird, folks. We're gonna stretch our dough out a little less than we have before, get a little sauce in there, some cheese, and we're gonna fold this over to make a little pizza dumpling. Seal it as tight as we can, then we're gonna gently pick it up and slide it into the water. We're gonna let that go for about 10 minutes. Easy does it. And that, my friends, is a boiled pizza. The game has changed. No browning of any variety, and it has a tacky, almost pierogi-like texture. Feels kind of like a savory gusher. I'm gonna cut it into a few different strips. So we managed to melt the cheese inside, and the dough is actually mostly cooked, which is impressive. Let's give this a shot. Well, it's not like any pizza I've ever had before, but it's also not bad per se. It would be a lot better if we finished it in a pan with some butter and onions or something like that, but honestly, I don't hate it. Deep fried pizza. Fried pizza time. We're gonna take another pizza dumpling and lower it into some 350 degree oil and see what happens. And I guess that's a deep fried pizza. Okay, so yes, this obviously looks like a deep fried calzone. The exterior has a cool, bubbly fried texture, but it still feels pretty tender, and it puffed a lot for sure. Let's cut it. Ooh, steamy, dangerous. So probably could have stuffed it more, but I didn't want it to burst, and it's mostly cooked through, just a few bits that could have used a little bit more time. You know, I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty awesome tasting. I mean, it's fried dough, cheese, and sauce. I, I kinda wish we had done it like a calzone with just cheese inside and sauce for dipping. It's certainly not a pizza, but it does not suck. Steamed pizza. All right, we got a pizza. We got a bamboo steamer. We're gonna slide that pizza right in there. Oops, uh, just rearrange a little bit. Close the lid and come back for our dim sum pizza surprise. Wow, that is something. So clearly it did not brown, it did seem to cook, and it has a weird kind of pillowy texture, but that inside did not hold together too well, and it's pretty soupy, it's almost wound-like. Pretty hard to cut in the regular way. Ooh, yeah, very floppy. Man, believe me when I say I've eaten worse things in the making of this show, it doesn't taste like pizza, but it's definitely not inedible. I mean, the dough is cooked and the cheese is melted. What more could a person ask for? Stovetop oven pizza. Now we're gonna try a different standalone pizza oven. This one is ceramic and powered by the gas burner. We're gonna open it up, come around this side to slide our pizza in, and close the door. Open it back up, and there's our pie. Right off the bat, I'm really liking this color we're getting around the edges, especially these nice blistery bits, very appealing. And underneath, we've got nice crust speckling. That bottom surface clearly gets really, really hot. Wish we got a smidge more heat on the top, though. Cutting in, ooh, this sounds legit. Great oven spring, beautiful cheetah pattern. Wow, great texture, great flavor. If I'm being picky, I wish the cheese browned a little bit more, but this is definitely right up there with our best. You know, it's starting to feel a little bit stuffy in here. Let's head to the backyard. Pizza stone fire pit pizza. All right, we've been preheating this pizza stone in this fire pit for about 20 minutes, and we're just gonna slide this pie onto this superheated slab of ceramic. Oops, that's getting pretty burnt. Let's take it off. So clearly it's quite undercooked right here and then practically blackened on the bottom. Let's get in there. Yeah, it's definitely still really doughy. Yuck, very burnt, but also very raw at the same time. Too much heat under, not enough over, blech. Wood grilled pizza. So here we've got a circle of dough. We're gonna slide it right onto this rack. 
Then we're gonna flip it, hit it with sauce, cheese, and let it finish cooking. And that's our wood grilled pizza. This one kind of popped a little bit like our flip grilled pizza, and it's a bit soupy in here because there wasn't a lot of heat applied to that side, but we've got some nice color on the bottom crust. Probably could have built that fire up a little bit more. Cutting in, nice spring, but still a bit doughy right around the edges. Yum, good crunch, nice wood smoke flavor. This is more of a flatbread than a pizza, and we could have tweaked the method a bit, but not bad at all. Camping pot pizza. Okay, we're gonna get a little bit of olive oil into our preheated camping pot, and then we're gonna fling our mini pizza in there, close the lid, and that's some kind of pizza, I guess. Definitely really soupy in the middle, and the underside just kind of fried a little bit. It's a little bit burnt right around those bottom edges, but otherwise just looks pretty steamy. It's cut in, and we can see that it is still raw in the middle. Yeah, uh-uh. Nope, not a good way to make a pizza. No thanks. Easy Bake Oven Pizza. All right, we got our Easy Bake Oven. We've got our tiny pizza. We're gonna slide that in. Oh, it's a little stuck. There we go. And we're gonna check on this in forever. Now we use this weird tool to get it out. Ugh, okay, got it. And that's our Easy Bake Pizza. Let me see if I can get this out of here. Oh, okay. Spoiler alert, it's not that hot. So yeah, it's kind of cooked. The cheese is barely melted. It's hard to tell if it's raw or not. It's very soggy. Yeah, nope, not good at all. Bad, ugh. I think this is a sign that we should head back inside. Microwaved pizza. We got a pizza pie. We got a microwave. We're gonna open this up, give it a good spray slide our pizza in, close the door, and set it for three minutes and 30 seconds. Wow, okay then. I mean, the cheese certainly melted and the sauce definitely cooked, but that outside crust feels weirdly tough and hard in a way I can't really account for. It's really hard to get through this with the pizza cutter. There you go. Gah, wow, that is truly bizarre. The interior is floppy and soft, but the outside is tough like cardboard. This is a terrible way to cook a pizza. Pizza cone pizza. Okay, another weird one, folks. We're gonna punch out this shape here, fold it over, and seal it with this patented crimping device. Get it onto this silicone cone. Then we're gonna bake it in a 470 degree oven for about six minutes. Okay, now we're gonna take our crust cone and fill it with sauce and cheese, and then bake it until the inside becomes a molten, dangerous slurry. Ta-da, pizza cone. This thing looks demonic to me, like an animal horn meant for a satanic ritual. Decent browning around that edge, though. Oh, it is very wet in there. I'm terrified that I'm gonna burn myself eating this. You know, to be honest, I find the crunch to be somewhat appealing, but otherwise this eating experience does absolutely nothing for me. Pizza is good. Don't mess with pizza. Dehydrated pizza. We got a dehydrator here. It's set to 158 degrees, which is the highest setting. We're gonna take this thing off, come around with our pizza, slide it in, close our lid, and come back in four and a half hours. That looks dried all right. This almost looks more like conceptual art made about pizza than actual pizza. Let's cut it. Wow, it's really tough around the outside and very tacky and dry in the middle and very thin. I mean, it almost has a perverse kind of crunch to it. Oh, it's so raw. It's rehydrating in my mouth as I chew it. This is disgusting, bad, not good. All right, today we cooked a whole lot of pizzas a whole lot of different ways. What did we learn? Well, for one, high heat and thermal mass are the name of the game. The quicker you can apply sustained, even heat to that dough, the better the end result. There are a lot of simple, very effective ways to hack your home oven to produce a close to pizzeria level pie. And there are also a few serious business gadgets out there that are truly impressive, and quite a few that really aren't. Have a favorite way to cook a pizza that you didn't see here today? Leave it in the comments.